this. Um, this is in chapter two. All of Second Ezra is something that we all should read because it deals with the end time. It goes from very the the end all the way. To, I mean, the beginning all the way to the end. Things, you know, 
uh, uh, Pastor Ron will always say this. Well, when, when you have got enough from the enemy, the Most High will come in and push you back and say, okay, I got this. Get his step in front of you. He will step in front of you because you are his child. You are his seed. So this is part of be quick with this. Look, 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 and I'll move my hug. <laughs> I'm trying. So first of all, he made a covenant with us. He made a what? A covenant is more or less like an agreement. And it's binding, right? Yeah. And most covenants should be not breakable. So he made a covenant with the children of Israel that he chose us, number one. That's in chapter two of the book of Jubilees. He chose us on the Sabbath. Raise your hand. Father, say thank you. <laughs> and let me say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah. This thing is not make believe. This is the real deal. Huh. It amazes me that it's the real deal. Yeah. You know, you keep reading, you be like, okay, whoa, wait a minute. And then you look out and say, man, it's the real deal. Mm -hmm. So in chapter 1, he said in verse 5, and he said, Incline your heart to every word which I will speak to you on this mount and write them in a book in order that their generations may see how I have not forsaken them for all the evil which they have wrought in transgressing the covenant which I established between me and you for their generations this day on my Sinai. And thus it will come to pass when all these things come upon you that they will recognize that I am more righteous than they and all their judgments and all their actions. And they will recognize that I have been truly with them. So his covenant is also a sign. It's a sign because he agreed to do something. And it's a sign because he didn't break it. No matter how hard it was. No matter what we did, he continued to keep his covenant even though there was chastisement. Even though we got a pop pop. But look, he said, I am more righteous than they in all their judgments and all their actions, and they will recognize that I have been truly with them. So he did not forsake us. And do thou write for yourself all these words which I declare unto this day, for I know their rebellion and stiff neck. He's talking about us as the children of Israel, that we were what? Hard headed. Yes. Before I bring them into the land which I swear to their fathers, to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, Unto your seed I will give a land formed with milk and honey. And they would eat and be satisfied, and they would turn to what? Strange gods. So number one, who stiff neck, write it down. Stiff neck, unrighteous, turn to other gods, rebellion, or rebellious. But he promised. Yeah. And they will even be satisfied. They will turn to strange gods, which cannot deliver them from out of their tribulation. So we can understand our stiff neck is what opened up the enemy to come in. It was us. Nobody did it. We can't blame nothing on nobody. We did it. Remember, when we say enemy, we actually talk about him because the enemy is still part of his army. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. Huh? It's in his book. Every enemy that we say is an enemy, he said, look, my mighty army that I sent, I remember when I first read that, I was like, what you talking about? 
this down. So what I was buying it up. But what did I open up? Yeah. So when we talk about the enemy that we see here, he's talking about a lot of times he's going to be talking about a people. Because the people were rebellious. The Gentiles or other races or even us, the some of us that have gone away from the Father, we are no longer a child. We become a Gentile. We become a heathen. Look. Strange gods, and this witness shall be heard for a witness against them. So, not only strange gods, but what else? They forget all my what? Commandments. We are to keep the commandments. And they will walk after what? The Gentiles. He told us not to walk after the Gentiles. They will go after their uncleanness. <clears throat> they will go after their shame, and they will serve their gods, and these will prove unto them an offense. It's going to be a tribulation. It's going to be an offense, a tribulation, an affliction, and a snare. That's a whole bunch going on right there. This is so we can gain an understanding of what's happening, so we can see his love and how much he loves us. And so many would do what? Perish. Let's see what Ezekiel eleven sixteen says here. So many are going to do what? Perish. Ezekiel 11, um, verse 16 says, Therefore says, um, say, thus says, Elohim, although I have cast them off among the Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the countries, remember we're all scattered, yet I will do what? I shall be a little sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. Y'all see that? Therefore, thus says Elohim, I will gather you from the peoples, assemble you from the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. So he's still saying, everywhere he goes, he's trying to say, I'm going I'm to I'm get you, but you're hard here. So go in that corner, you're going to stay in that corner for about four hours. So in that four hours of corner, don't ask me to come out because it's already set. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to the corner too much. Did y'all ever go to the corner? I didn't have a I, I had the switches too, but I, I, a couple times I had the corner. I didn't like that corner. I never got the corner. Did y'all ever get the corner? No, 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 no. Oh, you didn't have, your mama did? No. no. Oh, okay. It's not because she's sitting next to you, though, right? Okay. <laughs> 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 now you get a pop pop. And my, and my kids, they didn't get no corner. I got a spoon, a good, good spoon. I know. Oh, yeah, I'll give a pop pop. Before they even get it, they real. <laughs> they feel it. <laughs> Already crying. <laughs> anyway, you need to hear more Jay and Katrina talk about that. What Jay said, he hid that with his phone one time. <laughs> he didn't know I had enough. <laughs> I said, you hid it. <laughs> so let's keep reading. But y'all see that? So y'all need to mark that in in you know in your book so you can have references because everything we say it needs to verify itself in other places. And we'll be taking captive. You're gonna be one so. The hard-headedness is going to be, is going to bring forth captivity. But in order to get out of captivity, there had to be some repentance. And, and they would make to themselves high places 
I have hollowed for myself in their midst, and my tabernacle and my sanctuary, which I have hollowed for myself in the midst of the land, that I should set my name upon it, and that it should dwell there. And they will make to themselves high places and groves and graven images, and they will worship each his own graven image, so as to go astray. And they will sacrifice their, their children to demons. That Deuteronomy 32, 17. And to all the works of the error of their hearts. And I will send witnesses to them that I may witness against them. But they're not going to hear. And they will slay the witnesses also. And they will persecute those who seek the law. And they will abrogate and change everything so as to work evil before my eyes. Abrogate means to do away with. And that's how that grace message came in, because it was doing away with the commandments and the laws. Because if we are taught early, we understand that we were born in sin, Adam messed up. Hey, look, it's Adam and Eve, baby. They messed up. So when they messed up, sin entered. Sin came about. So when Adam and Eve messed up, here comes sin, in the flesh, and here come, oh, well, we can say, here comes Satan to torment. How is he going to torment? He's going to be after them left and right to get them to do what? Go against the Father, go against the covenant. So here comes sin and, and it um, enters in. And so the word says that what? We are born in what? Sin, sin shaping in iniquity. So we're born innocent into some stuff. We're born innocent into a generational curse. So then here we are. We just born. We don't know what's happening. We sucking our pacifying, drinking our milk, and we don't know. It's like Ezra said, well, what the heck? It would have been, it would just would have been better. Why is evil growing with us? So sin and flesh is grown, is that he is, is born in sin, shepherd, and then here come family. The fam depending on what family you're in, here comes some more generational curses. Then the father, because of hard headedness, and probably I should put that there, here come ancestors. Or should I say forefathers? There's a whole bunch of sin going on. This is a whole bunch of generational stuff going on. And remember, it's like the sin is like this. Like a bear trap. Do your hands like this. And keep them in. The more you try to get out of them, the tighter it gets. And the more you try to, the tighter it gets. So it takes the most high to deliver us. It's going to take them to deliver us when we make a decision. Because you got a lot of stuff going on that is against you. You have this world system that's against you. You have your own head. Your own mind that is against you. So then you have also adversarial um, um, spirits that's also against you to keep you from obeying the covenant. Born in sin. So you got a lot going on. So you have to make a decision. Look at your name and say, make a decision. Make a decision. Especially during this time where judgment is for real in the earth. It ain't no, it ain't no play. It's it. It's like, it's right there. What you say? Right there. In the door. Mm -hmm. At the door. Because we're going to shut the door. We're going to turn and shut the door. But we also want others to turn. We can't be afraid to talk to somebody. You have to turn. We can't be scared. We can't have no fear. Because the blood will be on your hand. We're going to get to that next week because we got to evangelize. Mm -hmm. And we have to love people so much that we don't want you, you don't know it's real. Mm -hmm. So if he's here real, you better know hell he'll real. Mm -hmm. 
You see? You got to know this is thing is real, so it calls you to turn because nothing that we do is hidden. Nothing. In the back of the boot in the corner of the dog, he's still there. He's there, and, and, and there are scriptures that says, you thought I was a man just like you. You thought I could not see, but I'm the creator of everything. So in other words, the world system made him as mere common. They took away the power. And so most of our family and family members that were raised even in church, they are part of, it, it ain't right. Because religion is, is, in Christianity, is like, it's, it's, it's a slow cooker, it's genocide. It's like a frog in a pot. Yeah. You don't even know. Frog in a pot, been in a pot for seven years. Mm -hmm. Died. Burning. And so what we want to do is turn. We got to turn. We got to teach others to turn. Whether you want to hear it or not, the most high is going to show you how. Yeah. To speak. And don't be scared. You got to love.